What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a great day. Today is finally the day that we are installing those painted Mustang GT four piston calipers. We got the rotors to install and I got a couple little surprises here that I'm going to go over with you in just a second. So today we're going to go through and install all of that stuff, put it on the Mustang, bleed the brakes, go through all those steps and see how they perform. So what surprises do I have for you? Let's check it out. Well guys, as you can see, I have my two painted calipers down there. I have everything I think I need. We got the brake lines over there. I have this little cheap Harbor Freight uh, brake vacuum bleeding kit. So first time testing that out today. So we'll see how that goes. I think I have the sockets I need down below as well. And uh, obviously some gloves, but I do want to show you one thing here and that is the rotors. The rotors I did end up taking to my local O'Reilly Auto Parts store and I had them turned. Basically they are looking brand new again and I figured since I did that I might as well go with some new brake pads as well just to make sure everything mates up properly here. So I ended up going with the Power Stop Extreme Street Performance Pads. These are technically the Z26 pads. Uh, they did come with these new little brackets and some uh, grease as well. So we got pretty much everything set up here. Now, did I really need to resurface the rotors and everything? They weren't that bad. So I kind of thought when I looked at them, but I don't know, just for the peace of mind thing of like, you know, I'm going through all the work to put them on the car. I'd hate to get them on there and then <laughs> find out that they're warped or the brake pads and stuff, there's some wobble in it. I don't know, I just wanted to make sure they're as good to go when we install them on the car. So I do feel a bit more confident in this whole thing now that I know that the rotors are true. Well, with that being said, let's get started on removing those calipers and rotors and uh, we'll get on to the fun part here of installing the good stuff. Dude, I'm pretty excited about this, guys. I mean, you can see the stock rotor brake setup here two piston calipers going to the four, which I know is just the stock GT brakes, but dude, look at how big these are. I mean, they're, they're pretty huge, I'm not gonna lie. So it's gonna be cool to see what braking performance we can get out of these. First, those stock ones, and with those pads, guys, it's gonna be cool. So let me go and remove these. I just had to show you the difference here, man. Jesus, huge. Boom, baby. <laughs> All right, now we just kind of have to slide the caliper off the rotor. Do just like that. I'm just gonna set that on the K member. I believe that's what it's called. Or whatever support that is over there. I don't know, I don't know, I just work here. <laughs> All right, we have the caliper set off to the side here. Now we uh, will probably put the new rotor on, take this one off first, and then we have to go in here. Let me see if I can get you guys a shot. We have to remove this bolt here, which holds the brake line bracket on, and then there is a nut at the top of all this, which secures this brake hose to the brake line that we'll have to remove, and then we can take the brake line and the caliper out in kind of one section. And then I'll actually have to uh, break the uh, bolt loose here that holds that brake line onto the caliper because I'm gonna have to reuse that bolt, I believe, and then uh, I gotta attach that to the other one. So that's good. Are you guys ready to see how big a rotors we got here? Well, let's pop this one off and uh, we'll put the big boy on. How's that? Well, it didn't go exactly as planned, but basically what I resorted to was a socket going around each uh, kind of flat spot here on the rotor, hitting that without hitting my hand, which is a goddamn miracle that that didn't happen. And then I used my rubber mallet and I went around and tapped the rotor loose. So now the rotor is off. Look at that. One step closer to new brakes. Oh yeah, these are much heavier, guys. Much heavier. Check it out. Oh yeah. Dang. After mocking up the rotors, I needed to finish removing the stock calipers. So first, I loosened the nut connecting the brake line to the brake hose. Then I removed the bolts holding the bracket to the frame. 
Lastly, I decided to plug the brake line with a rubber plug I got in a kit from Harbor Freight. Seemed to do the job. So with the uh, stock caliper on the bench here, we have also, obviously, our bigger four piston caliper. This is where I can really see how much larger these uh, new calipers are. It's pretty incredible. So this is gonna be kinda cool. But for right now, I have to take the bolt out of this um, connector here that's on the stock one. It's a little banjo bolt that uh, I believe is just gonna go straight into this one, at least I hope, because right now, if it doesn't, I don't have another option. I'd have to run to the store and get one. And you know, with my luck, that's probably how it'll go. But um, I'm gonna try to break this loose here real quick. And we'll take that off and uh, hook up the new brake line to the, uh, the four piston caliper from the GT here. Uh, another quick note is that the uh, brake lines are different from the EcoBoost to the GT. So here is a GT uh, brake line, stock GT hose here. And let me see if I can give you a good view of this. That is going to be your model number for the hose that you would need if you don't want to do braided lines or updated lines, you know, upgraded lines, I should say. Uh, if you just want to do stock GT lines, that's what you're going to use. They do have a little bit different of a fitting on the end here, so we're going to have to, we're going to have to put them on. There we go. After I swapped the brake hoses to the new calipers, it was time to install the new pads into the new calipers. These stop techs, they look great and I'm super excited to see how they perform. Since this is my first time installing the pads into these GT calipers, however, I struggled a little bit, but eventually got everything into place correctly. We got it on, baby, look at that. These are huge. Wow, I love them, I love them. I have the brake line connected to the actual caliper itself. Um, and I have the caliper bolts uh, snug down, tightened down in the back. I'm gonna torque those down, so uh, we'll, we'll make sure of that. But now I just have to connect up top here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be done soon. Well, we gotta bleed the brakes and make sure everything works. But besides all that, Jesus, did you see that? Besides all that, we're gonna be done soon. I can't believe it. As you can imagine, the process for installation is the exact opposite of when we remove the calipers. Fit the brake hose to the hard line, then tighten down the nut and resecure the bolt that holds the bracket to the frame. All right guys, so I have everything kind of tightened up here and installed as far as the brake calipers, rotors, and pads. Now we just have to bleed the, the system here. Um, and this is just, a little cheap kit from Harbor Freight that I picked up. Now mind you, this is my, my first time bleeding brakes, so hopefully I do it right and I don't make any sort of massive mistakes, but uh, you know, it's a learning thing and uh, I don't know, we'll see, hopefully it goes well. So this is the kit, super basic, little vacuum pump here, canister for the brake fluid to come into, and I have the adapter on that side as well, which will fit onto the little bleeder valve here. From what I've learned is that you start on the farthest bleeder valve from the master cylinder over there where you fill your brake fluid. So that would be the passenger side in this case, since we're not doing the rear, passenger side, uh, all the way out on the on the outside here, then we'll do the inside, then we'll jump over to the driver's side and do the outside and then the inside as the final. And then that should wrap everything up here. Um, the only thing after that will be uh, breaking in the pads. And so I don't know if I'll have enough time to do it today. We have some commitment later this evening and I got about 30 minutes to get this done. So let me start by bleeding the brakes and we'll see how far we get here. Hopefully, we get far enough to put the tires on it because I'm hanging out of the garage and it won't close unless I roll the car forward. And that's gonna be kind of difficult without the wheels on. So, wish me luck. The next day. Well, as you guys might see, it's a little bit brighter. It's the next day. I'm wearing a new sweatshirt. All that stuff probably gave it away. Uh, bleeding the brakes didn't go quite as planned yesterday. That little Harbor Freight kit, I don't know, I just couldn't get the vacuum, enough vacuum, I guess, on the little, I don't know, the little nipple, I guess, to get enough fluid out. So it looks like today we're gonna be bleeding the brakes. 
the old-fashioned way. And Megan's here to help because I can't do it by myself. So Megan, you are gonna be the official brake pedal pumper 9000. No, I'm just kidding. Deal, sounds good. Okay, <laughs> so why don't we start that now? Uh, do three more pumps and hold it. Big thanks to Megan here for helping me pump the brake pedal. I couldn't have bled the brakes without her help. And then I had to have a little fun with the vacuum pump because, you know, why not? <laughs> And there we are guys, we have the car back together, everything's torqued down, ready to go, and let me, uh, let me just say this man, they look pretty good, I'm not gonna lie, okay, I know I'm biased because it's my car, but I think they look pretty good. Uh, the only other thing now is to make sure they work, so I'm gonna hop in the car, we got to uh, break in the brake pads here, and I'm gonna go with the instructions uh, that's on these PowerStop Extreme Z26 brake pads. And it's basically just like five aggressive decelerations from like 40 to 10 miles an hour. And then you do, uh, what was it, 35 to five miles an hour, five of those. Then you just cruise around for five minutes to cool them down. So nothing too crazy, but uh, let's hop in and see if they stop the car. Be good. Well, I'm nervous. Okay, let's go. All right, we're driving now. The first thing says to get up to like 45 miles an hour or so, and then we're gonna hit the brakes aggressively down to 10. So let's do that now. To 10. Okay. And then we'll go. And we can't stop either, so let's go here. And then go down to 10. So that's two. Now, I won't bore you with the entire break-in session here, but I followed the break-in instructions and thankfully everything went just fine. The calipers and pads stopped this car so much better. Honestly, it's a night and day difference. Now, I think you probably wanna see how they look on the car, so why don't I just show you that now? Guys, I appreciate you watching as always. Uh, this was a, a super fun one and I know it's taking kind of a while to get this whole project done. So thanks so much for bearing with me. If you have any questions or anything, put them in the comment box down below. I'm happy to answer those if I can. And uh, let me know what you guys think of, uh, of the project so far. I think uh, this is gonna be pretty cool. So far with the stopping power, it's definitely way better than the two piston calipers that's on there. Way, way better. I will have more of an update for you guys as I get used to them and uh, be able to drive the car a little bit more. But uh, I'll save that for another video. So thanks again. I appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next video. You guys have a great day. Bye. Gotta keep that vacuum up.